Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix this fan up here. So this fan has an overrun on it, so basically when you turn the fan off it should run on and it's set for about 15 minutes but it's not. It's only running on for about 30 or 45 seconds, sometimes it doesn't run on at all. So this is at my brother's house, so if I get him to turn the fan on at the moment, right, so it's on now and then if we turn it off Right, so it's turned off now and it's still running, but you will see it will only run for about 30 seconds or so. I'll fast forward through this bit. And there we go, you see it's turned off now. So there's obviously something wrong with it. Now apparently this has been doing this really from a few weeks after it was installed. So I'm thinking it is gonna be a faulty component, but we're not gonna know that until we take it down, get it on the desk, and then have a good look at it. So next time you see this now, it will be on my desk and I'll have it sort of jerry-rigged up with a couple of power leads to mimic how it's wired up in real life. Obviously, I have to mention that when you remove it, make sure the power's off because mains electricity can easily kill you. Right, so here we have the fan. And if you have a look at it, we've got a lovely burn mark here. So if we take this cover off, you can see that it's nicely scorched all around this area here, around this, what looks like a big resistor. So it doesn't look very healthy there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a tiny mark on this bottom wire here and this bottom contact, so I wanna make sure I know which wire goes in which one, because they're both just black, because other, otherwise if I put it in the wrong way, I'm pretty sure the fan's gonna be spinning the wrong way, so if I do, get it working again, or even if I don't, even if it goes back like it is now, then it's going to be sucking the air in from outside to inside, so it's not going to be doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm just going to mark that up now. Okay, so I've labelled that one up bottom, I'm just going to take this one off as well, and then I can take the board out. Obviously there's no electrical supply on this at the moment. Right, so it's really nicely burnt there, isn't it? You can see on the white cable. So I'm looking forward to getting this out and then having a real close look to see where that burn is actually coming from. So I'm assuming that's to do with the fault. There we go, right, so that's the circuit board out, so we don't need to worry about this just yet. But you can definitely see all the, the scorch marks. Right, so this is our board here. Right now I'm looking at this, what I presume is a resistor and it looks like the, uh, the coverings come away from it completely. So I'm not going to be able to tell what colour code that is unless it's written down at the bottom. And it definitely looks really corroded. Look at that. But maybe that just heats up a lot. Maybe it's not actually faulty. I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do, to begin with, I'm going to get some IPA and I'm just going to clean everything up and just to see if I... See if I can see any markings on the board or anything, because that's going to give me a good idea of what this one is here. Because I can see that there is something is written just below it there. So let me clean it up and see what happens. The good news is that around the chip area looks nice and clean. I mean, maybe these are very common chips, I'm not too sure. In fact, some of you might be interested, so I'll uh, show you what it says on it. There you go, so you can get the reading from it. These are the other components. And let me show you the traces underneath, because then you might be able to work out what each thing does. Okay, so the very fact that it runs on from a bit makes me think that whatever it is, is working, but it's not working correctly. Now, as you know, I don't know much about components at all, and I don't claim that I do. That's the whole point of these videos. It's trying to learn as I go along. But I'm thinking with a resistor that really it should either work or not work. I'm assuming this is a big, uh, big massive resistor. Not sure what that means. But... Uh, these here look like small resistors, that looks like a diode, a diode, that looks like a diode, resistor, transistor. I'm thinking, because it's only doing it for a little while, that if anything, 
it might be the capacitors because if they're not uh, I don't know if they have to time wise if they have to store energy or something for a certain amount of time or maybe this thing could be faulty if this is faulty maybe no matter what this might only be registering for example whatever it went on for 30 or 40 seconds this might be no matter where you put it registering the same in fact I should be able to measure that if I was to go onto the pins at the bottom looks like there's three pins and put my meter to ohms then I'm thinking that by turning the top I should be able to get some kind of different reading let's zoom out a little bit so this is just on the ohm setting let me have a little play around see if I can get anything off it Two, two. So does that look like it's not making any difference no matter what I do? Point two three. Point two two. They're all really the same, aren't they? Maybe. Maybe I'm going on the wrong pins. Three, three. Okay, so that's point four five. Point two five. Okay. But that's mega ohms, so. Right, okay, that's not making any sense to me. I know it's going to make sense to lots of you out there, but uh, remember, this is me. <laughs> right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder these capacitors to begin with, and I'm going to check out them using my. I can use the capacitance on here, or I also have a little uh, meter to check them out as well because it says what they are here 330 microfarads 16 volt and this one is 47 microfarads 16 volt again I might even have some spare capacitors of that rating I'm not sure I'm going to unsolder them and see if that makes a difference if I find something that's wrong then if I can change it then I can attach 240 volts to here and see how long it how long it uh, stays on for. Ha ha, look! Look, 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 look! This is the problem. Have a look here at this capacitor. Can you see? The pad's broken at the bottom, look. That must be the problem. Right, I don't believe I did that when I was cleaning. I could be wrong, but I don't think I did. I was too gentle. Right, I'm going to unsolder this. I bet it's this capacitor that's... Uh, but mind you, it is still connecting there, even though it's broken there, it looks like it's still connect. oh no, it's broken now. But it looks like it was just hanging on to the trace there. Right, okay. Well, I think that's a good place to any to start. Let's unsolder this capacitor, let's test it. But even if it's testing okay, it could just be a, uh, a thing that, because the break happens here, it wasn't making a, a good connection. The thing is, it wasn't broken completely, it was only when I wiggled it that it actually broke off the track. Yeah, let's unsolder that. There you go, so you can see it's on my uh, the tip of the soldering iron there. Right, so I'm gonna have to do some repair work there. Well let's test let's test this out, see what it does. So black lead to negative, red lead to positive, try not to touch it.
Right, 150. Hold on. Right, it's dropping. Right, so around about 80, 85 microfarads, and what is this one? 330. Right, okay, well that's quite a big difference, isn't it? Let me just double check it with another meter. Right, so looking at this, this is 16 volts at 330 UF, so looking at the little uh, chart down here, 16 volts, 330 UF would be around about in between 0.33 and 0.18. Let's see what we got. Right, this is way too high, so this is 15.3, so it should be 0 point something, not 15.3. So that says to me that this capacitor is faulty. So I don't think the fact that it was broken on the board there is anything to do with the actual fault itself. I think it was still hanging on in there. Let's just use this little tester here, see what comes up. No, unknown or damaged part. Yeah, th this, uh, this capacitor here, I'm almost certain, both testers are showing, this one's saying that, that there's no part in it, and the, uh, the other one's showing that the, the range is completely different. So, I'm confident that this is 40. So now I'm just going to pop this capacitor out and see what this one's testing. Right, so this one is 47 microfarads, 16 volts. Well, if my meter's working correctly, that's well out again. That's only 9 microfarads, and it should be 47. Let me try and do it without actually touching it. Yeah, 9.5. Right, so that's going to need that's going to need changing as well. Let's pop it on here. So it should be 16 volts, 47. So it should be Okay, that isn't recognising it at all. Let me try my other little tester. Oh, here you go, capacitor. But it's saying 10.67 microfarads, so that's well off 47. Right, let me see, I have got a pack of capacitors. Let me see if I've got enough to do the job here. Right, so I need 16 volts at 47. Right, I've got 25 volts at 47, and I need 330 microfarads at 16 volts. And I haven't got that, I've got 220 or 470. So, uh, 
Let me pop in the 47 one because 47 at 25 volts will be fine. What I believe is that it doesn't matter if the voltage is higher as long as it's equal or uh, higher. As long as it's not less then you're not going to have a problem. So uh, let's pop this one in. So basically if you have a look closely here we've got a plus and a minus so we're going to be putting the plus side to the plus and the minus to the minus. Now if you have a look you can see that one side of capacitor normally has a stripe down it and they've actually put a minus sign on this one here so we're going to be putting the minus on this side here. I'm just going to solder that one in. Okay, so I'm just going to check on eBay now and see if I can get this 330 microfarad one. Now, uh, yeah, looking at the back here, let me just explain how this works. Let me zoom in a bit. So basically on this side here we have a neutral, a switch live and a live. So I believe this is how it works. Normally just to get the fan to work when, for example, you turn on the switch or maybe for it to come on with the lights, you need to have the neutral go into here and the switch live to here. And then every time you turn the switch on, you'll provide an electricity to this and then the fan will come on via here. Then when you turn the switch off, the fan will turn itself off. But now if you want it to overrun, you need to have a second live go into here. So really you've got two lives go into here one to operate the fan normally with the switch and then when the switch is off it needs a separate live because obviously when the switch is off there's no live going into here so then the second live comes in and then depending on how you have this will depend on how long the fan stays on so for example it will be you know maybe two minutes all the way up to 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever the range is on this I don't know if you have a look up here you can see that's uh, on the body here you see it says minus and plus timer minutes so I don't know what the range is on here but obviously there's no point in having it coming on for 20 seconds like you've seen at the beginning of the video so if we flip it over let's just see if we can follow the trace so this is the one here that provides the overrun to my knowledge this live here and if you have a look it goes to here which is one part of this resistor and then it goes all the way around to here which is that part of the fan and now the other side of the resistor is here which goes to this point here let me point with my meter here which goes to this point here which is this component here I'm not sure what it is if I'm honest with you I don't know whether it's some sort of diode or something I'm not sure but then so that comes up here to here and then from here it's linked to this next one next to it which is a resistor and it's also linked to this capacitor here and then it goes up to this point here and then from here it goes via this diode to this point here which is then jumpered to this capacitor that we, that we took out earlier so if I put my multimeter on you can see from here it jumpers to here and then the other side of the capacitor goes to here yeah, and then it starts going to the chip after that. Also from this one here, this uh, beginning off the diode here, it also goes across and it goes all the way up. Let's have a look. Goes here, up, up, down, to this part of the, the chip here. So a lot of the points do go through the chip. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the chip does. Maybe this is the clever thing that determines how long, I mean I thought this was the thing that would determine how long it's on for but maybe this decides whether it's getting the power from the switch live or the live because obviously when we turn off the switch live this has to know to then take power from the live otherwise it would be taking power from the live all the time Right, let me have a look on eBay, I think that's how it works anyway so it does look like it is, you know, those two capacitors are obviously integral to it so I'm hoping by just changing them out that they're going to be okay. I mean, maybe there's other components that are not working on here, but I think they're the, the most likely ones because it is working a little bit, isn't it? It is running on for a short amount of time. Right, let me have a look on eBay for this other capacitor. Okay, so I managed to get them on eBay, 16 volt, 330 microfarad, 
and they were, I think it was just over £2, £2 and 10p or something for four. I went for Panasonic because I thought they might be slightly better than some of the other brands, so I'm going to have three spare for any jobs that I need to do in the future. It's always handy to have these in because it looks like capacitors are the uh, problem of many, many things. Don't know if they're the problem here, but I'm hoping they're going to be. Now, it, most of that price was actually made up from the postage. But if you were to buy these in bulk, then you probably would get them for maybe you know, 20p or something like that. But if I can get this working for 50-something p for this, and maybe this probably worked out to be 20p or something, it's going to be well under a pound. So if I can get it working for less than a pound, then I think it's well worth doing. Now, I'm still slightly concerned about the amount of scorching around this area here. So I think what I'm going to do is unsolder this uh, resistor here, this massive resistor, and I don't know what the readings, what ohm reading it should be because everything's been scraped off it because it was so badly burnt, but I just want to see if it is basically reading something. Obviously if it's completely open then I know that I will need to find out what this is and replace it, but if I'm getting a reading then I think I'm going to leave it and just see if it works with the two new capacitors. So that's what we're going to work on now. two kilo ohms. Remember I don't know what this actual resistor should be reading because the colour code's gone from it and even if the colour code was there I wouldn't know what it means without looking it up online anyway. But 22 kilo ohms, I mean it is reading something. I'm just going to pop it on my little tester here. There you go, resistor, 22 kilo ohms. I'm happy with this. I'm. Uh, if the colour code was on it I would look it up but if it was blown, then obviously I would change it out, but it's not blown, so I'm just going to put it back in. Okay, so as you already know, this pad is now ripped off, so I'm going to have to, when I get the new capacitor through, I'm going to have to solder it onto something. Now, I could scrape back the track here and try to get the connection onto the track but I think it would be easier for me just to let the leg of the capacitor go right the way through because when a new capacitor comes through it should have much longer legs so when I put it through here I can solder one onto here like it should be but this one I can just let it run right the way through and then I can bring it round and probably I think I'm going to attach it to this one here or I could go onto this one here this one might be the easiest so let me just double check that on the multimeter so on continuity and yeah, there you go. And this one here goes to there. So this one goes to here as well. So I've got different options. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I just have to wait now until it comes through from eBay. Hopefully it will be here in two days. Okay, so a couple of days have passed and my Panasonic capacitors have arrived and I looked at them earlier and they are 16 volt at 330 microfarad. So if you have a look there, they are the correct ones. So let's pop this in the right way. So obviously this is the minus side, the side with the strip on it. So we're going to put it in that way around. Now remember I have to leave the minus leg long because I have to root it round. Sorry, not the minus leg, the plus leg long because I have to root it round to one of these other ones. So I'm just going to put a bit of solder on this first one. Solder and iron set to 350 degrees C. Now I've got to be able to bring this leg round and touch this one here without touching anything else. So I'm going to snip, snip this minus one now and uh, I'm going to work out the easiest route to do it. Now remember I want to keep it well away from everything else and I want it quite close to the board so it's not going to catch on anything. I think I'm going to put it to 
they are going to put it to this one here. Now what I'm going to do is I have got some heat shrink, so I think this would be an ideal opportunity just to use a tiny bit of the heat shrink. I've got all different sizes, I've got them very cheap off eBay, all different sizes because I thought they would come in handy for something, so I've been looking for an excuse to use one and I think this is probably it. Obviously you could just wrap a little bit of tape around it, but hopefully this might be a slightly neater job. Right, so I need it to be around here. So I'm going to snip, let's try to make that look a little bit nicer. I think that will do there, so I'm going to snip it here. Yeah, that should do. Right, I'm going to shrink that onto there using my hot air. Okay, so it's not going to shrink any more than that. Really, I could have done with a slightly thinner one, but. At least now that's going to insulate it against anything else. And we're going to solder that onto that one here. There we go, that is it, you see? So I don't think that's going to cause any problems. Right, so now what I have to do is I'm going to uh, clean up the fan a little bit, pop this back in and then we're going to have to wire it up just like it would be in real life but obviously I've got to do it safely so I'm going to have to wire it through a switch and everything just via a plug. So that's going to take a little while to do. Okay, so I've got it all rigged up here and as I'll show you now in a minute, it is all working well, which is good news. Slightly confusing with this little dial up here, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So basically what I've got is I've got a plug giving this power supply, so this is just plugged in essentially to the wall, so 240 volts is coming out of that. It goes into a switch here so I can turn it on and off, and then from here it goes into here. Now I've had to use three core cable going into it because remember we need two lives. So basically the middle one, the black one there with the brown brown sleeve and is the switch live, the brown is the live and the grey one up the top with the blue sleeve and is the neutral. Now don't copy my colour codes, I think they're correct but I'm not an electrician so don't copy what you see in this video. So basically what happens is from the plug, from this flex here, it goes into the back box and I'm just using a Wago. So the uh, live comes in here and then two lives come out of it. One goes to here and then the other one goes into the actual uh, switch itself here. So then when it's uh, switched on, the live comes into it and that's the switch live. Then when you turn it off, the, the permanent live wires it up here. Now basically, when I first of all did it, I thought it wasn't working properly because it wouldn't turn off. But it was to do with this style here. It's really confusing. If you have a look here closely, you will see that it says plus and minus. So my brain would say that right now, because it's turned all the way over to plus, that it should be on for the half an hour or 40 minutes, whatever it's rated to. And if you follow the way of the minus, I would have said that that was on for one minute. Well, in this instance, it's the opposite. If I go clockwise all the way over here, it's on for a minute, and then I haven't left it go all the way over here. When I got it from my brother, it was up the top here, and I timed it, and it stayed on for 14 minutes and 38 seconds. Now, this is a screw fix fan, but it actually is, according to my brother, a Manrose fan. I think they're quite a big manufacturer of fans in the UK. So I suppose rather than screw fix making their own, they just put their name to maybe a lower end model off a Manrose one. 
and uh, I went onto the Manro's uh, instructions online and basically it says rotate, well some of them have a more sensible dial that actually has numbers of minutes on it which makes sense because all you then got to do is put the arrow to 20 and that will be 20 minutes or arrow to 5 and that will be 5 minutes but on one where it was just plus and minus like this it does say rotate clockwise to reduce runtime, rotate anti-clockwise to increase it. So if we want to reduce it we do it clockwise which is the way around here. So, according to that, it does make sense. Right, okay, I have to stop the video there because this is quite embarrassing. Of course, it was confusing to me because I was looking at it from the front of the fan. When I was editing the video, of course, the camera was from the back and it makes complete sense. So, I was doing all the adjusting facing it and that's why it was back to front. But, uh, I can't believe this. <laughs> but if you look at it here, of course now, sorry it's hard to see because the cover's on, but look, if you do it clockwise, then it is going to minus. So clockwise does reduce the runtime, and anti-clockwise does increase the runtime when you're looking at the back of the fan. I should have known that, that's quite embarrassing. Well, right, let me get on with the rest of the video. So let me just put the cover back on it now, and right now I've got it set to about the lowest setting, which should be about one minute. So I'll show that working, and then, because remember to begin with, it only stayed on in my brother's house for, I think it was 20 seconds. I've lost the screw. Found it, it was stuck to the, uh, <laughs> the magnet of my phone case. That reminded me of when I did the, the trying to fix the watch video and uh, I kept losing the screws every few seconds. Right, okay, so remember this is not a safe setup. I just want to show, I just want to show it working. So I'm going to put it this way so nothing fouls this back bit here. And I've got my switch here. Right, okay, so I'm going to plug it in. You will see it is off. I'm now going to turn it on. And now it starts working. And I'm going to get my phone. And I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to press start. So I'm turning it off now. Press start. And you will see that it will run for about, about one minute. Now just to show you that it is actually working. Can you see that that's blowing up here? And you can see it's not flopping down when I do that. Yeah. And if I was to hold it up here carefully you will see that it will get sucked in, yeah? It's nice and quiet, I thought my brother said it was noisy that the bearings were going, but it seems, seems quiet enough to me. Now remember by now before it had shut itself off. There you go, one minute and two seconds, I think that was. So uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unplug it and I'm gonna change it to uh, point a little bit more around. I'm not gonna make it go to the 15 minutes, but I'm just gonna do it so it's probably maybe like four minutes or five minutes. So now with this one here, I'm gonna move it just a little bit to here and that will probably be about five minutes and then I can finish up the video. Right again, so we're going to plug it in, turn it on, reset this, let's put that somewhere where you can see it here, and now let's start it and turn it off. And I'll come back to this when it's done. Okay, so there you go, seven minutes, uh, I was a bit late there, whatever it was, seven minutes, 20 seconds. So you can see how the adjustment works. So I think if I was to take a guess, I reckon the adjustment would be from one minute to maybe 30 minutes or one minute to 40 minutes, that's sort of, actually it'd be one minute to 30 minutes, I think, looking at the amount it goes round. So that's it, let me unplug this to make it nice and safe. I really enjoyed doing this one and that's because it was just, it's kind of easier to get your head round because it was a smaller little circuit board. As well as that, it's nice just to replace two capacitors. Even though they don't look damaged, 
these were the things that were causing the faults and now by spending less than one pound you can see the fan is now working and you never know this fan I think has already been up for around 15 years so it might be possible to get another five or six years out of it depending on the bearings and stuff and also depending on that main resistor but still However long it lasts, it's still a bonus, and for less than a pound, I think it was well worth it. Obviously, if your time's precious to you, then you might want to think about the amount of time it takes to fault find this, but at least then it saves this getting thrown away, and uh, it gives it a new lease of life for a while. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. I particularly enjoyed this one. I'm going to give this back to my brother now. He can install it back in the bathroom, and hopefully then it will uh, give service for more years to come. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.